In the end, the plan was to sell the property for a tidy profit of $1.25 million against the 860 that we had paid for it. And I was so excited to do that. But coronavirus completely changed the luxury market. For a while there, the market stopped operating at all because we weren't allowed to show property. And there was a good couple of months where nothing was going on. And I'm sitting in this very expensive payment. I would call it a house, but at that point, it just felt like a payment, right? Wondering about what we were going to do next if this market didn't come back. It did come back, but when it had come back, it was a little bit different than when it left. The luxury market is impacted by political sways. It's impacted by the stock market. Right, it, the people are going to decide where they want to invest their money, and sometimes it's housing, right? And sometimes it's not. And at the moment, nobody was really investing in anything because we were all kind of wondering what was going to happen next. The end of the story is I sold the property about a hundred grand less than I intended to sell it for one point one three million dollars. Still did very very well considering. But I learned a ton. What is your takeaway from this? If you have the cojones and the funding to do a high-end flip and you're buying a property for $800,000 and you can sell it for $1.2, million, whereas as an independent, I guess, median market flipper, I'm normally looking at a profit spread somewhere between twenty dollars and $25,000 per deal. You can get them big paychecks of six figures I know guys who have made three, four hundred thousand dollars on a single flip, but high risk, high reward. Check, check, one, two, one, two. Turn, turn it up, turn it up. Welcome to the Foreclosure Deals Coach Podcast. The tides are turning, the time is now. You're home for the mindset, methodology, and tools needed to invest in foreclosures. Don't you dare buy a house, buy a deal. You need to get into this right now. Right now, yeah. And now your host, the Foreclosure Deals Coach, Donnie Corum. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Foreclosure Deals Coach Podcast. No, no. I'm your host. Oh my God. <laughs> this is great. And Foreclosure Deals Coach Donnie Corum. That one unruly member of the crowd you're hearing is my executive producer and all around badass, Mr. Jonathan Winston. What's the haps, baby? Uh, not too much, man. The crowd was, you know. Passing around a little bit of that Colorado tree, so they got me. A oh, I see. Up, man. So sorry, sorry, I came in a little bit hot, but you know, I'm here now. We're having fun. We are excited about today's episode. Uh, I think it's extremely be, excited, extremely be excited good for um, you know informed investors. And you know, yes. me personally, uh, let's see what's going on with me. Uh, man, you know, I'm just staying, staying active, staying, uh, staying after it as far as looking for more deals and. Uh, yep. Staying in contact with uh, potential sellers and things like that. So, honestly, my days are kind of the same most of the time. So, there is that. I mean, it's good and bad, right? Because the thing about real estate is you're trying to change it up. Like, you want to, I, I, for me anyway, I got this, uh, like, an ADD version of some kind where it's like, I got I to gotta keep things moving. That's why corporate America didn't work for me. I had to take on different tasks each and every single day. And what I love about what we do is it's always something new, right? Things are coming at you from all sides. You're dealing with the buy side. You're trying to buy a deal, trying to sell a deal. You're trying to figure out funding on a deal. You're consulting with the, uh, the construction team to figure out how to fix up the deal. It's nonstop, yeah. man. It's just a mm-hmm. nonstop energy. So you gotta, you gotta get your energy up, man. That's the thing. You get getting more deals. You're not going to have that much time to sit around. You excited about that or worried? Oh, I'm excited, man. And, you know, when I say my day is the same, it's, you know, the same as far as maintaining, you know, consistent practices of what it takes to find a deal. So, you know, yes. making sure I, you know, do my outreach, send out my text, making sure I check the market, see if I can find anything on, the, you know, on the market that might look like a deal that we might be able to flip. And um, one thing that uh, your wife, Laura, was talking to me about uh at the New Year's event that we had, uh, you know, okay. at the beginning of this month, it was just about the importance of consistency uh, yes. in real estate and how, um, you know, it just all kind of stacks up. Once you're, you know, main, main, making sure you're doing the same, the profitable task and the income producing tasks that you know will bring you deals. Once you stack those up on, you know, on each other months, you know, weeks, months, years at a time, you're going to see the outcome of that. If you're, 
continuing at it and you're continuing to educate yourself and you're continuing to learn. So, hey, I'm just I'm, I'm learning more and uh, continuing to work hard. So I'm excited, man. Absolutely, man. It just, you got to keep hustling. You know, this is a hustle based business. At the end of the day, the, the activity breeds results. But, you know, Laura's totally right. Uh, it's activity in one specific location. If you find yourself all over the place all the time, then you're not getting anything done. So it is kind of combining the efforts of a few small activities as opposed to trying to get it all done. We could go on for hours about that, but let, let's get to the show today and talk about what we came to talk about today. We're going over the luxury market and how to make them big spreads on doing luxury flips. Maybe. <laughs> See what I did there? So let's stay tuned. Let's get to it. Well, what, what is going on in the luxury market? Well, we got this article where a company by the name of Acra Lending and a gentleman by the name of Keith Lind, Housing Wire interviewed uh, Mr. Keith Lind to discuss how they are tackling demand for jumbo loans in 2021. Now, here's what's funny about this article. And obviously, I read through it, but the fascinating part of it is how it, it's got this I guess vibe of again the big money guys were just we're just here to help and serve yeah. the market's needs, you know. Like this is this what here's what's actually happening. There is so much money in the market right now that what used to be considered a jumbo loan, which by the way, you know, in most circles, what I was it was about six hundred thousand. You know, I was about considered a jumbo loan, five to maybe six hundred thousand. Then in recent years, been in the eights, you know, eights and beyond. Now. You know, like a jumbo loan is about a million, right? Because in most markets, million dollar houses are becoming commonplace, not more common than non million dollar houses, unless you're talking about San Diego or New York or something like that. But they're not as hard to find as they used to be. You know, they used to be able to count the number of million dollar sales. In Colorado Springs, Colorado, where I do the majority of my fix and flip deals on, on two hands, you would, you would know the number of million dollar sales pretty clearly, right? Not so much today, right? It's not like a huge amount compared to the market overall, but because the price of housing has gone up so much in recent years, going up 6 to 8, 10, 12% a year in the past couple of years, you're now seeing a big demand for jumbo loans. So Acra Lending, obviously a huge lender, is here to serve that need. What nice people. And I'm being facetious, but I find it hilarious that it's, uh, you know, we just happen to show up when you need it. Really, what happened is there's just a lot more million-dollar houses, you know? And so... What you're going to see is a push on the jumbo prime market to meet those needs. As more people want to buy million dollar houses, more people with a ton of money are going to show up to lend the money to buy those houses. If you listen to our previous episode, um, we were talking about Joe Biden's $15,000 tax credit. And I went over that the market, when we talk about the housing market, has surprisingly little to do with houses. It has to do with the mortgages that back those houses. So the reason you're seeing more million-dollar houses is because the lending has allowed more people to do a million-dollar loan. Let's have some fun here. You want to buy a million-dollar house. What's your mortgage payment? Uh, I don't know that off the top of my head, Donnie. Could you maybe tell us? Of course. Why, Why would you, right? Here's the thing. The mortgage calculation is complicated. So is most car payment calculations. There's so much that goes into it, but what you can do is you can whip out a mortgage calculator. I happen to use the one from Quicken Loans. There's a bunch of them. You can get them apps on the app store. And I really want you to do this, okay? I want you to get a mortgage calculation app on your phone. Seriously, stop what you're doing or continue listening to me right now. Go to your app store and download a mortgage calculation app right now. I'll wait. I'm doing it as well, guys. So I suggest you do it. All right. So you're back with us. You've got the app. Okay. I want you to put in a million dollar purchase price. So it should have on there loan amount, million dollars. Let's take out down payment for a second with, there's a bunch of stuff that goes in. No, you probably can't buy a million dollar property with nothing down. Okay. This article explains that they're doing a a product that you can put 10% down, which I got to tell you is awesome because generally speaking, you would need 20% down because only conventional lending 
would handle these jumbo products and conventional lending in most cases wants 20% down, but they're willing to do 10% down. And we're going to take that out of the equation entirely to make my point today. Okay. So you're financing a million dollars, right? Put that in as the, uh, as a purchase price. Now today prevailing rates are wandering in the early to mid 2% thing. Now, real quick segue, you have to wonder a little bit how this ties into foreclosure deals coaching. Okay. I'm going to tell you that there's going to be more deals in the upper end market than the normal market. See in the normal market, you will always have a retail buyer available to buy that house. Even when the market collapses, you're going to have people who want to buy that house and can live in it. And if those houses are within the median price range, there will simply not be as many deals as they're going to be in the luxury price range, right? So if it is your interest to do a million dollar flip, you've got to know these numbers, okay? So that's what this has to do with foreclosure deals coaching. Let's get back into it. You've got a million dollar loan amount, Okay, the prevailing rates are between two and three percent, but you have to know that when you're buying luxury or jumbo, they kind of have a a tax attached to that, meaning they can charge you more because most people can't do this, right? So we got to figure you're going to be at the upper end of that payment range. Let's assume three, actually, let's even do 3.5 percent. Okay, okay, we are going to do a 30 year fixed term on the mortgage. Okay. Annual taxes, depending on where you're at, when you get into the million dollar price range, you got to figure your taxes are going to go way up too. Why? Because the county, the residents, the state that you're in knows that if you're buying a million dollar house, you can afford to pay more in property taxes. Hmm. Right? So we're back to that rich people got to pay more for stuff. Right? So annual taxes depends on where you're at. I can tell you that here in Colorado Springs, Colorado, I own one property in the Northgate area of Colorado Springs, North End. Approximate value is about 840, right? But just across the street from me is, you know, are some million dollar places. My annual tax is about 4,000 a year. Let's use, for the sake of objectives here, 5,000 a year in property taxes. Right. Okay. And I may be, depending on where you're listening to this, I may be way off. Okay. Look around, go find yourself a million dollar house on the market and see what the property taxes are. Okay. In Colorado, we are blessed with very low taxes, but this same million dollar house in Texas could be 10, 12,000 a year easy. All right. So I'm, I'm just giving you a, a pallet here. You gotta, you gotta localize this to your local market. Next up is your annual insurance. Your insurance on a million dollar place is going to be substantially higer than the insurance on a three hundred thousand dollar place. Duh, yeah. right? The insurance on your Ferrari is going to cost more than the insurance on your Honda Accord. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So the insurance guys are going to get their cut of the action. They're they're taking a lot of risk off your hands by insuring this property, and as such, you could expect your insurance to wander. Let's call that four thousand a year, maybe even five. Let's use four. Okay. okay? Now, uh, some mortgage calculators have this, others don't, but the next thing mine does is asks about HOA dues. Okay, uh, the HOA dues are going to be they're going to be higher, right? Because you're in a very expensive neighborhood. In my mm-hmm. neighborhood, I happen to get away with murder ours are pretty cheap, but it's still about 200 bucks a month. Okay. Right? So, all said and done after this long calculation. And here's the thing. If you hadn't done this, you're going to drive by these million dollar houses and go where most people go. I can't afford that. And you're going to keep driving. Right. And the answer may be right. Depending on where you're at in life at this moment, maybe the payment that I'm about to tell you is more than you can afford today. But if you don't change your mindset to what this is going to cost, you will never get there. So all I'm doing is helping you to understand that one day, if you're doing this right, you will have enough money to buy a million dollar house and you need to know what that's going to cost. Okay. Today, all those things added up on a million dollar balance. My monthly payment came out to $5,440 a month. Sounds like a lot, right? Yeah. What was your down payment? I didn't do a down payment. I said, I said, we wanted to do zero. Okay, cool. We're going to assume you can't probably do it, okay? We're going to assume that you're financing a million dollars total, though, just for the sake of objectives, okay? okay? No down payment. Not going to happen. We want to make that assumption, okay? 
statistically, you'll probably have to put 20% down. And this article that we posted is allowing people to put 10% down on these jumbo loans. But we, that's too much math for us right now. We're just going to assume you have nothing to put down. Okay. You're at $5,440 a month with taxes, insurance, principal, and interest, all that stuff. Hi, this is Donnie Corum, your foreclosure deals coach. One of the things we talk about on the show is the importance of great foreclosure data and helping you to find a great deal on a foreclosure property. But where do you find this data? You're certainly not going to find it on Realtor.com. You can't get it on your local MLS. So we have partnered with data provider Foreclosures.com to get you the latest and greatest in foreclosure listings right there in your local market. These properties are not hit the market in most cases, and when they have been foreclosed, gives you easy access to find out more detail so you can get the best deal on a foreclosure property. Getting started is super easy. Head on out to foreclosuredealscoach.com and click on the link labeled foreclosure list. Enter your zip code for a free seven-day trial of the best foreclosure listing data available in your local market. These properties are not even on the market yet, so you can get a jump on them and get a great deal. Once again, this is Donnie Corm, your foreclosure deals coach. We'll look forward to seeing you there. So, This show is about how to make a bunch of money flipping a luxury property. So obviously, you want to hear from somebody who's done a luxury property. Where would we find somebody like that, though? Hmm. Oh, yeah, me. So about about a year ago, my wife, Laura, and I, Laura has this incredible taste for design. In addition to being drop-dead gorgeous, I know I'm biased, she's my wife. She's also got impeccable taste, okay? So we bought this property in the Highlands Ranch area of Colorado, which is kind of Denver-ish, but just south of the metro Denver area, okay? 6,000 square feet, picked up a deal from a seller who's still a good friend of ours right now, who just had this massive 6,000 square foot house. Unfortunately, he had lost his wife. His kids were all older and had moved out of the property, you know? So it's kind of just him in this 6,000 square foot house, and it needed to be up. Updated. It had been built in the 90s and it felt like it. You know, here we are in 2021, 30 years is a lot of time to elapse. Some of y'all listening to the show were like born in the 90s. Right. I mean, so like it, it's, a, it's an old house by, by, by those statistics. Beautiful architecture, nice design, an incredible neighborhood. Okay. So we purchased the property for $865,000. And we did a show with Laura on the before talking about, uh, you know, what the process we were going through doing the remodel. And I got to tell you, I learned a ton from doing luxury flipping. I also have to tell you, I was scared to death because my payment was at a much higher interest rate than the rate I quoted you guys on the show when we started here and my payment was in like the $7,000 range. And I just didn't feel like I could afford that for very long. Although I make enough money, I did not want to be prone to a $7,000 payment. So the plan was get this thing fixed up and get rid of it. Mm -hmm. But right as we're getting this gorgeous remodel done, coronavirus hit. And it was, you know, January, February timeframe, we're kind of, you know, we were actually still living in our downtown Denver condo because it wasn't done yet. Uh, downtown Denver was starting to fall apart. Uh, you know, politics, the, the homelessness had taken off. It, it wasn't fun anymore. All the cool reasons why you want to live downtown were shut down. So we opted to move into this thing while we were flipping it. And it gave me such a powerful insight into how luxury flipping works. Um, that at some point I want to do a full um, thing where we just talk about a luxury flipping course and just walking people through their first luxury flip. Because I, I think it's going to be an incredible thing to offer uh, to our, our listeners and my coaching students alike. But for right now, I'll just tell you how it went. We bought it for eight sixty five. dollars We had put about eighty thousand dollars into it now your first instinct is i you know i can't do this i don't have the money to buy the house to begin with much less to put 80 grand of work into the property i didn't either okay this is my first foray into luxury flipping so how did i fund this i got a private investor who i paid another substantially high interest rate on a good amount of money here to give me the money i needed to provide the down payment on the property so i had no money down of my own money and help me with the funding. But because it was at such a high interest rate, my $7,000 payment just went to $8,000 a month. 
Is you see the risk here? Yeah. In the end, the plan was to sell the property for a tidy profit of $1.25 million against the 860 that we had paid for it. And I was so excited to do that. But coronavirus completely changed the luxury market. For a while there, the market stopped operating at all because we weren't allowed to show property. And there was a good couple of months where nothing was going on. And I'm sitting in this very expensive payment. I would call it a house, but at that point, it just felt like a payment, right? Wondering about what we were going to do next if this market didn't come back. It did come back, but when it had come back, it was a little bit different than when it left. The luxury market is impacted by political sways. It's impacted by the stock market, right? It, the people are going to decide where they want to invest their money, and sometimes it's housing, right? And sometimes it's not. And at the moment, nobody was really investing in anything because we were all kind of wondering what was going to happen next. The end of the story is I sold the property about a hundred grand less than I intended to sell it for $1.13 million. Still did very, very well considering, but I learned a ton. What is your takeaway from this? If you have the cojones and the funding to do a high end flip and you're buying a property for $800,000 and you can sell it for 1.2, 1.3 million, whereas as a independent I guess, median market flipper, I'm normally looking at a profit spread somewhere between 20 and $25,000 per deal. You can get them big paychecks of six figures. I know guys who have made three, $400,000 on a single flip, but high risk, high reward, right? So if you're going to do this, first of all, you're going to need a lending source that will do a luxury or higher end flip. And I would look into the likes of Acro Lender, but you're also going to need a solid banking relationship. This is not necessarily, not to say that mortgage brokers can't do upper end loans, but I can tell you in my experience, you're usually dealing directly with a bank that's going to take this risk with you. So you're going to want to make sure that your banking relationship is pretty solid. You know, before you take this kind of thing on. Next up, you're going to 100% need to have a contracting crew that can handle luxury level remodels. Okay, because it's not the same as slapping on a coat of paint, putting some carpet down. Everything about a luxury flip costs more. Right? You've got higher payments. Because you finance a lot more money. You're not putting in 2,000 square foot of carpet. Our carpet bill alone was like $15,000. That was just what the carpet in. Then you've got the hardwood floors. You've got windows, 40,000 bucks. You've got interior paint. And you don't want a run of the mill, got them on Craigslist painter in a million dollar house. Property ain't going to sell. Right? So our paint job was 35 grand. Ooh both because it was a huge amount of size and because I wanted the most quality paint job I could pay for, right? So everything gets bigger when you're doing a large remodel, a luxury flip like we're talking about, but the profit should as well, right? So keep that in mind because I'm not, listen, I, I far be it for me to discourage you for wanting to do luxury flipping. I got to tell you, I was scared to do it, but now that I've done it and I made a profit doing it, the bug is bit, man. Like I'm looking at million dollar houses going, that would be dope fixed up, mm -hmm. right? And I know how I'm going to pay for it and I know what contractors I'm going to put in it. Am I going to live in another remodel? I mean, I don't want to. But it does cut some of the expenses of doing the flip if you can add your own living expenses into it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm used to paying $3,000 a month for, or so where I live. So if I got a $7,000 a month payment, I factor out what I would have paid for living expenses anyway. I still got to make a $7,000 payment, right? But only $4,000 that's going to the investment. Does that make sense? So how do you make the big bucks of luxury flipping? Know the game. Do not, do not, do not start in luxury flipping. Okay. If you're going to do your fix and flip, don't go looking for a million dollar house because you've been watching way too much a and E's flip this house and you're high on flipping and you think you can just pull this off. It is not as easy as that show makes it look, ladies and gentlemen. It's tough. It's complicated. Don't start with a luxury property. But if you've done a couple of deals and you've got some confidence and you've built a relationship with a solid uh, 
construction team that can help you through it. And you've got the financing capabilities. Don't shut it out either. There's some huge opportunities. And if you can make a hundred thousand dollars at a time or more, what would your life be like? Not a bad place to be, right? Yeah. I think I could figure it out. (laughs) Kind of cool. So, and it is kind of cool having done it and I'm I'm living now and it's not considered a luxury flip by Castle Rock, Colorado standards uh, because the entry level price of Castle Rock, Colorado is already in the sevens. And this one will go for about seven seventy five, seven eighty. but it's a luxury by my standards, you know, and it's a nice house and we're currently living in it, remodeling this one. This one should also have about a hundred thousand, hundred and twenty thousand dollars spread on the back end for me on it. You know, it it can be done. There's a lot of money to be made in these upper end properties, but with the greater reward comes the greater risk. So you got to have your stuff in line before you get going on that. All right. So the point of the show today is to tell you, you can make a big spread. You can make six figures on a single flip. It can be done. I've seen it happen lots of times, but you can also lose your ass. Okay. And on a, a normal retail property, a normal median priced home in your market, you've got multiple exit strategies, right? You could turn it into a rental, right? If it's a median priced home, right? You should be able to sell it because if it's a median priced home. It's in line with where most people are buying right? You can refinance it into normal conventional rates, maybe lowering the payment to something you can just swing. None of those things can happen in the luxury market. In order to rent this property, I need to find somebody who wanted to, that property I gave an example of, I would need to find somebody willing to spend $7,000 a month on rent. And I'm not saying they're not out there, just saying a bunch of them, right? right. Because if you can afford a $7,000 a month payment, you probably own a home, Right? You can't, so renting's probably out. Living in it is an option if you can afford it, but if that wasn't the plan, that that could crush you. And refinancing it may be difficult if your income does not support the likes of a million-dollar house. Mine happens to do so, but if you're just getting started in flipping, yours probably doesn't, right? So you don't want to get yourself in over your head. My point in all this and making you do the calculation is it's more affordable than you think if you're actually making money as an investor. You know, if you got a quarter million dollar year income, that's $20,000 a month. I know I'm not speaking to a bunch of people, but if you're already an established investor, that's probably a pretty typical income for you. 180, 200 grand a year, right? Suddenly the five, $6,000 a month payment is a bit of a crunch on your lifestyle, but it doesn't crush you right? If you're beginning the game, you're not there yet. And this is not something you should be considering. It sounds wonderful to make a hundred grand on a flip, but if it's going to bankrupt you, don't do it. Start smaller. That being said, I'm talking to you established players out there. It's an excellent opportunity to expand your knowledge of the flipping world. It's to do a luxury property. If you got the finances to cover your butt, if it doesn't work out, right? Um, If you're in that position, I'd love to talk to you more about it because like I said, I do want to consider a luxury product, but I'd be super curious to see what's stopping you besides the obvious mindset stuff. We can overcome that over time, but what else is stopping you from doing it? If it were just lending, this article might be what you were looking for. Check it out. We're going to post it to the page. Maybe you need to have a conversation with Acra Lending, you know, and see if you can do a 10% down deal. But whatever it is that's stopping you from doing your luxury flip, if you're ready and willing to do something like that, I'd love to chat about that with you. Hop onto the group, the Foreclosure Deals Coach group. Let's discuss doing luxury remodels because that's where the big spreads are. And I tell you, when the market goes south, that's where the real money is going to be made, is making 100000 150000 at a time. But you got to know that you're going to be sitting on that property a while because when the market goes south, so will the buyers who can buy a property like that. That doesn't mean there won't be any of them, just means there'll be a lot less than there are right now. So you got to be prepared to play that long hold game if you're going to play in that space. Man, this is fun. Are you having fun? I know I am. This is a, I'm learning a lot, learning every day. So I hope everybody out there that's listening and everybody that's in our illustrious studio audience is learning a lot as well. <laughs> and they sound like they're having a good time. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> You're too kind. You're too kind. 
Listen, let's wrap it up with that. We're, we're, we're over time here today, but I do want to thank you guys for tuning in because listen, the market's changing around us. And the neat thing about change is if you find your niche, if you find where, not where you are, because where you are is a mindset thing, okay? You have arrived where you are right now based on what you thought up until this point. If I have opened your eyes a little bit to the possibilities of doing an upper end flip from a perspective, not of theory, but actually having done it, that was my job here today right? To open your mind, but that's really the key. You got to keep exploring. Where do you want to end up? Decide what you want and then go after that. The cool thing about the investing world is whether you want to do entry-level homes or condos or luxury properties, you can do it. It's just a matter of setting your business goals around your desired objectives. With that, this is Donnie Corum, your foreclosure deals coach, reminding you once again, don't buy a house. Buy a deal. Want more of the Foreclosure Deals Coach? Hit subscribe and stay tuned for more of the mindset, methodology, and tools you'll need to invest in foreclosures. Visit foreclosuredealscoach.com and text DEAL to get a list of foreclosures in your area.